Every day around the world, women are caught in a balancing act between motherhood and their professional careers. Finding balance can be hard, and the pandemic has only made it harder. Think about this. In December 2020, men gained about 16,000 new jobs in the United States, while at the same time, 156,000 women left the workforce. For every man that gained a job, 10 women left theirs. Employee, mother, leader, caregiver. How do women continue to find balance when faced with so many responsibilities? To find out, we asked working mothers at Siena to share their insight and advice. In my family, I have two children uh, aged 18 and 12. I have uh, two boys and a girl. I have a daughter and her name is Zoe. She's uh, just about a year and a half now. I have one son, three-year-old son. His name is Zahiki. In addition to looking after my, uh, my two daughters, I, um, I look after my dad uh, in Spain when I go back a couple of times a year. I was previously taking care of my dad um, I am an only child. He had kidney disease and he also had dementia. My son suffers with Crohn's disease. There was a balancing act with having to take care of dad, uh, taking him to his doctor's appointments and making sure that my son gets to his appointments. For a while, I, I used to make a joke and say, you know, I feel like an Uber driver. Gwendolyn thinks that my job is making calls, which is true connecting uh, cables or wires uh, across the ocean. They said, I don't know, something with numbers. <laughs> she makes really cool videos about liquid spectrum that you can see on YouTube. For her, it's like the next invention that's better than sliced bread. Nutella on toast, basically. All the time I say, I'm working with mom. He, he's drawing together with me, so I think he believes that I'm a drawer or a painter or something like that. If I could just give one sense of advice to a manager, it would be just to take a second and stop and check in with your people and see how they're doing, especially the working moms. Engineering is all about collective problem solving. So moms and women in general, if they are not invited to those moments because they are not available because it's kids time, this kind of things, they will have no space to learn and eventually they will leave the workplace give women, especially work moms, a, a seat at the table, if you will. One of the things that my manager did to support me was offer me to go part-time. It did help to make the transition with a new baby, a pandemic, no childcare, a bit easier on all of us um, in my family. The biggest challenge for me being a working mom and, and really devoting time to my, my daughter, I think is really the fear of missing out. Just fitting that together time in time management trying to juggle everything together and maintain balance trying to keep them entertained trying to keep the learning going them fed and not just throwing oreos on the table which does happen sometimes instead of single parent we should be called double parent <laughs> something that i do to uh, maintain well-being is well i'm a surfer so that's really a huge de-stressor for me. I keep a diary since I was 13 years old. It helps clean my mind. I go to Zumba. I do yoga in the morning before everybody wakes up. 30 minutes at the end of the night to watch reality TV. The most rewarding thing of being a full-time working mom is actually um, being a role model for my children. I feel like I'm teaching her skills that is hopefully one day going to make her into a really strong and confident person. When they see you working hard, uh, you know, you're also role modeling. You love to see them grow, um, become more curious and become what you hope is great, great humans on this planet. A piece of advice I would give anyone who's either getting ready to deliver or possibly coming back into the workforce this is a completely different ball game. It has been incredibly difficult to try to manage it all. I think the first piece of advice would be, don't be so hard on yourself. You're not always going to get everything done. We can have it all, but we can't do it all alone. Be present in the time that you do have with your family and just being really intentional about that. I try to focus on quality time, maybe over quantity of time. I kind of lay out the week and set the expectations. My daughter has anxiety, and so for her, it's very important that you tell her 
what's happening. It doesn't always go perfect, but at least I set the right expectations and I start my week in that path. I have these open conversations with my children all the time. If there are things that I need to change, then I work on that and we just do it together. All those years I was working tireless to get an ad, to have a name in the industry. Being out for six months, it was hunting me because technology changed so fast and I thought I'm going to lose this, this edge that I built in my career. If I would say something to my colleagues is that six months is not sufficient to erase a life of good work and good results. So just keep that in mind. My husband has a very, very demanding job being a World Health Organization doctor and especially in the pandemic that is going on. Very early on, both of us were very clear what success meant for us. Because we have that clarity, uh, we have been able to fill in for each other when it comes to parenting and so many other things that we have to do. Define what success means to you. I think everything then starts falling into place. Now, more than ever, Working mothers are searching for balance, and we need the balance women bring to the workplace. Women are critical to high-performing teams. Working moms contribute empathy, inclusive practices, and mentorship in supervisor and leadership positions. Celebrating mothers is more than a holiday. We need to actively champion working moms. Our full potential is only realized when our workplace works for everyone. To learn more about how working mothers at Siena maintain balance and well-being, visit Siena Life.